Unfortunately, it would take a civil war to end the atrocities against African slaves. The Southern Confederacy believed that the African slaves were less than human, that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior white race, is his natural and normal condition, quotes Vice President Alexander Stevens in his cornerstone speech. But Abraham Lincoln refused to let America be divided. After the attack at Fort Sumter, South Carolina, the struggle began. Families were divided, brother against brother. There were numerous casualties on both sides, but the Union Army prevailed and the Confederacy defeated back home disillusion. The Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves and along with a period of reconstruction, slaves assimilated into the fabric of the American society and the slave society of the South was gone with the wind. The Union Army that defeated the Confederate soldiers at Helena was led by General Samuel Curtis, who turned the fort named after him into a country band camp for newly freed slaves. At Helena, they could either stay or catch a steamboat up the Mississippi River to Illinois. During Reconstruction, blacks were given the right to vote and they used it to help themselves. However, white Southerners were still fighting the war using guerrilla tactics. They were determined to keep their feet on the back of the black man so that he could not rise and have any economic or political freedom. The one black man by the name of William Gray rose up in Helena and became Helena's first black lawyer in legislature. His grave is in Magnolia Cemetery today. To add insult to injury, ex-Confederate soldiers led by former Confederate General Nathan Bedford organized the Ku Klux Klan and began to terrorize black landowners and any black who would even look at a white woman. They raped, they murdered, they took land, and they lynched. Phillips County, Arkansas had the most lynchings than any other county in the United States, brought on by a massacre of black sharecroppers at Elaine, Arkansas. All they wanted was fair wage for their crops, just like their white counterparts. And it was truly sad. It's truly been a struggle for the people in eastern Arkansas and many other places. But we fought on. Those who were downtrodden and poor rose up and began to study. Caring and loving people, teachers who taught the poorest children became high achievers. They would sacrifice their own money to buy shoes, coats, and underwear. Yes, we fought home. The Brown versus Board of Education decision led by then attorney Thurgood Marshall removed laws that kept black people from attending predominantly white schools. Here in Arkansas, the governor Orville Faubus was a segregationist and would not allow black kids into Central High. But President Eisenhower federalized the troops. Then under escort, black kids bravely walked past hateful white mobs into the doors of Central High. Finally, the doors of a better society was being carved out by those who would not accept second-class citizenship. They were organized by Mrs. Daisy Bates and became known as the Little Rock Nine. A wonderful monument has been made in their honor on the Arkansas State Capitol ground. But the Ku Klux Klan was still murdering blacks. The decomposed body of Emmett Till's casket was left open intentionally by his mother so the world could see how black men were being treated in America. A Klansman placed a bomb at the 16th Avenue Baptist Church in Birmingham, Alabama, killing four little black girls who were merely attending Sunday school. The Klansman who bombed this had no fear of being convicted of this horrific murder. Rosa Parks refused to get up out of her seat and let a white man sit down, which triggered the Montgomery bus boycott. Then came the horrible beating of black protesters in Selma, Alabama. Dr. King's mark on Washington in 1964 and 1968, he was shot dead in Memphis.